The Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated from the Persian by John Leslie Garner, with an introduction and notes. Milwaukee, The Corbett and Skidmore Company, 1888. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug Quand aux utilitaires, utopistes, économistes, saint-simonistes et autres qui lui demanderont à quoi cela rime, il répondra, le premier vers rime avec le second, quand la rime n'est pas mauvaise, et ainsi de suite. Théophile Gautier Introduction Omar Khayyam was born in the first half of the eleventh century of our era at Naishapur, a small town in the province of Khorasan, a place which modern travellers describe as singularly uninteresting, but which at that time was of no little importance. The details which we possess of his life are exceedingly meagre, but doubtless true. His boyhood was entirely uneventful. He completed his studies at the Madrasa of Naishapur, an institution celebrated for the number of noted men who had there received their education, in the year 1042. While at school, his two most intimate friends were Nizam ul Mulk and Hassan Sabah, both of whom afterwards became celebrated in their country's history. One day, little imagining the influence it was destined to have on their careers, they jokingly entered into a boyish compact. According to the terms of this agreement, the one who should be most highly favoured by fortune was to interest himself in the advancement of his comrades. Their biographers relate that it had the effect of stimulating their zeal, each applying himself to his studies most assiduously. It was not long before the treaty was put to the test, for Nizam ul Mulk was called to a position in the government, and his companions immediately demanded the fulfilment of their oath. Hassan Sabah ambitious, jealous, and crafty, was given a place at court, while Omar, who seems to have been of a studious and retiring disposition, was, in accordance with his request, made chief of his village. Living quietly at Naishapur, he pursued his favourite studies of philosophy, mathematics, and poetry, and became a philosopher, a sceptic, and a fatalist. Following the custom of Persian poets, he adopted a takhulus, or poetical name, choosing that of Khayyam, an appellation suggested by the trade of his father, which was that of a tent-maker. His countrymen say that his extreme modesty prevented him from assuming a more pretentious name, the Oriental poets, as a rule, sharing the proverbial modesty of their class, thus Firdusi, the celestial, Hafith, the preserver, Sadi, the felicitous. The chroniclers relate that Omar was fond of spending the evening on the terrace before his house in company with his friends, surrounded by musicians and drinking wine, which was presented in turn to all the symposiasts by the saki or cup-bearer, a custom which still prevails in the East. He seems to have passed through those days with the indolence and indifference of a god. Places of honour were offered him by the government but he preferred to spend his time in a vain search for some rhyme for the reason of things, although he well knew that his aim was unattainable. His death occurred in the year 1123 of the Christian era. The various manuscripts, the texts used in his translation, were Winfield's, Nicolas, and the lithographed editions of Lucknow, contain more than a thousand quatrains ascribed to Omar although in this number there is constant repetition of ideas expressed in slightly varying diction. It is impossible to tell how many of these are spurious, for it is highly probable that many have crept into later editions, having been added by overzealous copyists unable to accept Omar's philosophy, or by readers who scribbled antagonistic strophes on the margins of their copies, which afterwards found their way into the text. This supposition is supported by the fact that in the larger collections contradictory stanzas often are found on the same page. The Rubaiyat, a poetic form in great favour in the East, seems peculiarly suited to Omar's thoughts. In the original, the first, second and fourth lines rhyme, 
although all four verses may do so, and some twenty-four different metres are in use. The only respect in which the form of the translation agrees with the Persian is in leaving the third line blank. It is a difficult question to decide what was Omar's real philosophy. He probably suffered periodic attacks of metaphysics with accompanying changes in his beliefs. But, unfortunately, the arbitrary arrangement of the original, which is in accordance with the alphabetical order of rhymes, offers no clue to the chronological sequence or development of his ideas. It is well-nigh impossible for an Occidental to accept the mystic interpretation of Monsieur Nicolas, and, judging by his notes, it seems as if he too had grave misgivings regarding poor Omar's character. However, while the old tent-maker, doubtless, was human, it is not likely that he was past redemption. He drank wine as he sang of it, and it is probable that his morals were little, if any, in advance of his age and country. But his vices go hand in hand with great virtues. Throughout his rubaiyat there breathes a spirit of charity and toleration towards his opponents, and an independence in thought, unusual in his time, and in an oriental land. A sceptic regarding the creeds prevalent, he tore down, but does not seem to have supplanted with anything better. He recognized the weakness of the human intellect when struggling with the questions of human destiny, at the same time regarding that destiny as implacable, a belief formulated throughout his writings in an Eastern fatalism. Inasmuch as there is a vein of pantheism in his poems, he may be regarded as a Sufi, but his Sufism is not the kind which the professors of the creed would have us believe, and his wine, woman and song are doubtless no less real than were the material inspirations of Anacreon, Horace and Béranger. While Omar's fatalism and indifference may to many seem pernicious, thrusting themselves forward in such a manner that they cannot be overlooked, the effect of the whole is, as Mr. Fitzgerald says, more apt to move sorrow than anger towards the old tent-maker. Omar, in the twelfth century, belonged to the class of thinkers which includes the agnostic of today. Recognizing the intenability of the doctrines taught by the various Mohammedan sects, he did not refrain from assailing them with ridicule. He seems to have thought with a modern French writer that the value of a religion depends upon its harmony, more or less complete, with the precepts taught by the reason, and with the facts established by science. Les religions de l'extrême Orient, Léon de Rosny, 1886 By his contemporaries, he was regarded as a free thinker and a scoffer, and was not until long after his death, probably when the examples furnished by his way of living had ceased, that the Sufis discovered the deep spiritual meaning of his Bacchanalian verses. That they did make this discovery, however, need not surprise us, for the Oriental mind, like the Oriental languages, as Mr. Huxley has remarked, is exceedingly subtle, and the Sufi of the East, as an expounder of the obscure, is no less adroit than the theologian of the West. Si la foi vient de Dieu, c'est aussi de lui qui vient la raison, was doubtless one of the articles of Omar's creed whatever his religion may have been, for he never tired of attacking the unreasonable and absurd. He felt a contempt for hollow ceremonial, and he scorned hypocrisy and deceit. Clemency and generosity, not vengeance and wrath, were worthy of the divine. Infinite mercy was incompatible with the Mohammedan doctrine of future punishments, while infinite power was opposed to the more modern theory of free will. The shortness and uncertainty of life and the instability of earthly affairs were ever in his thoughts. His appreciation of the unavoidable separation from things mundane, and the fewness of his wants, led him to disregard wealth and honours. Frequently a vein of pessimism crops out in his writings, but it is of a healthy, aggressive sort, very different from the article which the pseudo-pessimists of the day, in their solemn seasons of reflection upon their individual ills, are wont to style truth. Omar was a precursor of Schopenhauer, rather than of Leopardi. In the selections which follow, accuracy of translation was the principal aim. The collection might have been made much larger, but it was deemed inadvisable, as Omar's themes are not many, 
and the ever-recurring wine, rose, and nightingale are somewhat cloying to Occidental senses. The great questions of human life are of all times and of all ages, and although Omar never tired of struggling with them, he discovered nothing new, and at last, feeling that death alone was certain, he resigned the task in despair, exclaiming to his pupil Nizami, I shall soon be buried where the north wind will strew roses over my grave. And Nizami wondered greatly at the words, for in the Koran it is written that no man knoweth where he shall be buried. But a few years later, returning to Neshapur to visit the last resting place of his master, he found it close beside a garden wall, and he noticed that the blossoms had fallen from the spreading branches and completely hidden the tomb from view. End of introduction. Section one of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. With sparkling wine, sweet roses join, twill make the nectared draught divine. Let mirth and laughter rule the hour while roses plucked from love's own bower around our moistened temples twine, and add fresh fragrance to the wine. Bourne's Anacreon The herald of the morn, in lusty tone, loud greets the dawn upon her golden throne, again proclaiming to a slumbering world, another night beyond recall has flown. Arise, O Saki, the sunlight in is creeping, the drowsy soon will fall to death's sure reaping. Come, tune thy harp, and fill a sparkling measure, not one will e'er return of all the sleeping. The flowers upon the breeze their fragrance fling, the bulbul's notes within the thicket ring. Ah, come recline beneath the rose-tree's shade, the rose that once has blown must die with spring. Come, take thy lute, and seek the verdant plain, With countless houris fair a laughing train, For oft has heaven brought them into life, And turned them back to lifeless cups again. The violets that by this river grow Spring from some lip here buried long ago, And tread thou lightly on this tender green, Who sleepeth here so still thou ne'er wilt know. Our souls we gladly sacrifice to wine, the smiling, laughing daughter of the vine. Yes, Saki, stand thou ready with the flask, and to my lip the flowing cup incline. Mid joyful dances, and with wine and song, upon this mossy bank, the whole day long, I ask for nothing more. To think of hell, or e'en of heaven, would be, methinks, a wrong. A flask of wine, a loaf of bread, to every care and worldly sorrow dead. I covet not when thou, O love, art near, the jewelled crown upon the sultan's head. Yon fallen palace, once with heaven vying, where kings bowed down, is now in ruin lying. The ring-dove haunts its desolated courts, and wails, Coo, 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 coo forever crying. Now, where Bahram lived in wild carouse, the lion sleeps, the deer are wont to browse. Though oft he followed them with bow and spear, they never will his final slumbers rouse. When I am dead, my body wash with wine, sing o'er my tomb the praises of the vine, and when the day of resurrection dawns, commingled with the tavern's dust, seek mine. Tis said there is a place where Huri's throng, where we shall drink and list to lute and song. If paradise such pleasures offers us, to love the like on earth, in what the wrong? In adoration at the wine-jar's lip, we learn a lesson in good fellowship. The moments we have lost in fruitless prayer, we best can find again when wine we sip. Snow white, like Moses' hand, the branches grow, while clouds rain tears upon the earth below. The opening buds, revived by Jesus' breath, upon the air their subtle fragrance throw. Come, fill the cup, 
and quaff this kind nepenthe the sweetest gift of all the gods have sent thee for vainly wilt thou seek to find again the fleeting moments which the fates have lent thee such homage to the cup i e'er will pay that when my body in the ground they lay the odour of my wine will overcome all those who happen by my tomb to stray this tufted mead is sprinkled by the rain with all its flowers which our senses chain ere long the flowers from our dust will spring whose sight will they rejoice a question vain why heed the future's distant weal or woe enjoy the hour the morn we ne'er may know to-morrow we may join that caravan which started seven thousand years ago with tales of future pains men threaten me they say there is a hell in store for thee love if there is a hell for all like us their heaven is as empty as my palm will be yes loved one when the laughing spring is blowing with thee beside me and the cup o'erflowing i pass the day upon this waving meadow and a dream the while no thought on heaven bestowing our life will end it flies on foot amain what boots whether past in joy or pain at bulk or naishapur come fill your cup we die but still the moon will wax and wane love oh that god would build his world anew while aught of life remains to me and you and that he would our names obliterate or show more mercy be more generous too ah with what skill thy maker's hand designed thee and with what grace and loveliness combined thee but oft i wonder why he made thee so and then in this poor earthen home confined thee a few short fleeting days our life flies fast tis gone it flies as flies the desert blast but yet there are two days of neither joy nor pain the day to come the day now past oh might the vintage time for ever last the month of ramazan not yet has passed but while a jar of wine remains to us what thinkest thou that we shall keep the fast to wisdom's daughter i was one time wed thereafter fruitless dogma shared my bed her too i have divorced now from my roof and tamed the daughter of the vine instead come fill a sparkling cup and from the creed of one and all the seventy sects be freed and to the riddle of futurity the answer in the flowing goblet read the morn when from my eve's carouse i die i will not sue for mercy from the sky yea love for thee and wine i still shall yearn though sinner heaven and hell i will defy soon from the book of life our names shall fade and in the arms of death we shall be laid a little while and we shall turn to dust come boy my glass fill up be not dismayed the fears of death from your illusions rise for death is but the door to paradise the breath of jesus hath revived my soul the tales of everlasting death are lies the koran's word oft called the world sublime is seldom read and not in every clime but on the goblet's rim there is a verse men read at every place at every time come bring the juice whose dazzling brightness vies with these same houris merry sparkling eyes and which like a chain with links of iron holds within its strong embrace both fools and wise yes bid the saki fill the brimming measure and may thy closing days be spent in pleasure for when thy dust within the ground is laid twill ne'er be sought as some long buried treasure one morn while sitting by the tavern's door i heard a voice in accents mild implore come fill another cup with sparkling wine make haste the cup of life will soon run o'er in praise of wine and rose my words shall ring for these alone forgetfulness bring when dead the bricks that from my clay are baked may serve to build the palace of a king yes friend within the tavern thou shouldst dwell for ever lost in wine 
For who can tell the anguish that our sober moments fills? But when enslaved by wine, ah well, ah well. End of section one. Section two of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. La vie est ainsi faite, il nous la faut subir. Le faible souffre et pleure, et la son sait s'irrite. Mais la plus sage en rit, sachant qu'il doit mourir. Rentre au tombeau muet où l'homme enfin s'abrite. Et là, son nul souci, de la terre et du ciel, repose au malheureux pour le temps éternel. Le Comte de Lille Last night I broke my cup against a stone, an act of madness I must e'er bemoan. Ah, knowest thou not that I was once a man? The fragments asked of me in plaintive tone. The cup I prize above the realms of Tus, the crown of Corbud, or the throne of Caius. A lover's matin sighs are sweeter far than all the dervish sobs and groans profuse. Thou hast prepared a way with many a snare, and set with many a prize to lure us there. And still, O oh God, it is said, thou wilt not spare the man whose footsteps stumble unaware. Why let thy sins of old torment thee so? What gain to thee from all this crushing woe? The man who God's commandment ne'er transgressed Can ne'er God's all-forgiving kindness know. O oh, thou, who art in the universe entire, The object art of all my fond desire, Far dearer art thou than my quickened soul, More precious thou than life's consuming fire. Ah, spirit mine, your life is filled with sorrow, a respite from your toil you ne'er can borrow. I know not why you animate this clay, Since you must leave for ever on the morrow. Of those who have the long road travelled o'er, Not one will bring thee news of it Before thou too shalt go, And heed thee that thou leavest without regret, Thou shalt return no more. O oh, that to heaven's control I might aspire, and sweep away this universe entire, then from the ruins build another world where man might sometimes reach his heart's desire. No, from the future hope thou ne'er shouldst borrow, the very thought would fill thy heart with sorrow. Lose not the present moment in repining, for tis not known that we shall see the morrow. Yes, when we die the world will be the same, Chaotic darkness reigned not ere he came. Our coming and our going matters not, And we shall leave behind nor trace nor name. With swift destruction are fate's arrows fraught, Nor can this worldly wealth avail thee aught. The more I ponder on this world, I see the good is good, And all the rest is naught. Arise, and for my heart's relief, I pray that you will tear the veil of fate away. Quick, bring a cup, and let us drink the wine, ere fate shall make a goblet of our clay. End of section 2 Section 3 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Cieco error, tempo avaro, Ria fortuna, sorda invidia, vil rabia, iniquio zelo, crudo cor, impio ingenio, strano ardire, non basteranno a farmi l'aria bruna, non mi poran avanti gli occhi il velo, non faran mai che il mio bel sol non mire. Giordano Bruno I am, as from thy crucible I came, a base alloy, and though I feel my shame, I cannot hope to mend my erring ways. Tis thine, O Allah, and not mine, the blame. O, oh, thou the maker art of wrong and right, Whatever is, has sprung from thine own might. 
since i am but a humble slave of thine my sins in wrath thou never wilt requite this wheel of heaven in its fatal play will soon our breath of being steal away come rest thee on this bank for from our dust will spring the verdure at no distant day from birth we all are destined for the tomb the rose has but a little time to bloom but what is life this soul confusing draught that man will drink until the crack of doom why strive to know the hidden cause of all enjoy the sweet and bravely take the gall for on this chequered board of life we men are moved by fate the skies our souls enthrall with nature's secrets be thou not perplexed enjoy this world and do not fear the next ah seize this little breath of life as cash with that to come let not thy heart be vexed end of section three Section 4 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Es führte die Goethe das Menschengeschlecht, sie halten die Herrschaft in ewigen Händen und können sie brauchen, wie es ihnen gefällt. Goethe From all eternity twas known to one, the sovereign wine cup I would never shun and if i failed to drink this purple juice god's boasted prescience would be undone we all are puppets of the sky we run as wills the player till the game is done and when the player wearies of the sport he throws us into darkness one by one whatever is by fate was erst designed the maker now his labour has resigned and all our striving can avail us naught for all our acts were long ago defined yes since whate'er the pen of fate has traced for tears of man will never be erased support thy ills do not bemoan thy lot let all of fate's decrees be bravely faced twas allah who engraved upon my clay the laws i was thereafter to obey and will he cast me into raging fire because my actions answer to his sway End of section 4 Section 5 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam Translated by John Leslie Garner This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Les plus désespérés sont les gens les plus beaux, Les gens c'est des mortels qui sont des purs sanglots. Alfred de Musset a day or two our sorrows will be o'er a little while and then a parting sore but come and taste the dawn's sweet breath how oft will dawn respire and we no more what i can see behind the veil of fate what man can nature's secrets penetrate although our life is but a moment's halt oh that we might its end accelerate life's caravan unheeded steals away and with it passes all our pleasure nay fear not the pain the future has in store but drink upon us steals the twilight grey ah since the world o oh love doth grieve thee so and since thy soul for ever soon must go thy fleeting days among the roses spend ere long the roses from thy dust will grow the moonlight tears the robe of night in twain such moments wilt thou henceforth seek in vain when we are gone the moon will still be bright so fill thy cup and all its sweetness drain our life slips from our grasp we soon shall swell the ranks of those who in death's kingdom dwell and of them all not one has e'er returned the secrets of that peaceful realm to tell in earth's dark bosom myriads of the best that she has known disheartened in their quest for truth are sleeping while a waste of naught is thronged with those to come and those at rest ah since the future's riddles none can guess come fill the cup the cup that drowns distress ah love yon moon will often rise again 
will rise and miss us in her loneliness. Before us twain were many nights and days, the stars have long pursued their heavenly ways, but tread with lightest foot upon this dust, t'was once an eye that beamed with loving rays. Oh, that my face the brightness of this wine might borrow, and when dead, this clay of mine. I pray thee, wash it with the grape, then make my coffin of the tendrils of the vine. Oh, that the soul might leave its earthen home, and wing its flight through heaven's mighty dome. What shame, what shame to feel itself confined within a tenement of basest loam. Night's robe is torn, and dawn will soon appear. So fill thy cup and quaff the vintage clear. How oft will rosy dawn unveil her face, when thou and I shall be no longer here? End of section 5section six of the strophes of omar khayyam translated by john leslie garner this librivox recording is in the public domain fais cet acte de foi dans l'éternel génie de vouloir aujourd'hui ce qu'il vaut aujourd'hui et laisse-toi porter par la force infinie paul bouger when i shall bow me at the feet of death and bird-like all my plumage scattereth, make naught but wine-jars from my clay, perchance the wine-sweet odour may restore my breath. Yes, when my soul is sunk in lasting gloom, my body will be placed within the tomb. Thereafter man will take my clay, some bricks to mould, to place upon the grave of whom? With Aristotle wise you may contend, and Caesar's power may e'en transcend. But still drink wine from Jamshed's cup, though Bahram's self the tomb would be your end. If friends of mine you are, come, cease your brawl, then fill your cups, and when in death I fall, I pray you take my clay and mould a brick to stop a hole within the tavern's wall. How long, O Saki, shall we ponder o'er these fruitless arguments of five and four? Come, Saki, tune thy harp, we all are dust, a breath of wind. Come, fill one goblet more. Mid wine and minstrel songs I love to dwell, my clothes, my heart, my soul for wine I sell. All earthly cares and griefs I toss aside, together with all thoughts of heaven and hell. Ah, when thou camest here, what broughtest thou? At death thou wilt the earth with all endow. For fears of death thou hast abjured the cup. But, drink or not, thy death is sure, I trow. And of them all, endowed with wit and learning, And styled by men bright torch of wisdom burning, Not one has passed a step beyond the darkness. They mused a while, then left to sleep returning. When first I saw this world of joy and pain, assailed by doubts that ever will remain, I wondered what it meant to live, to die. The question oft I pondered, but in vain. Fair heaven's tent was long since raised, t'was then that nature's ways were hid from human ken. Life's cup the everlasting sake filled with millions of these bubbles, called men. O friend, to fear, why should thy thoughts be lent? To earthly sorrows be indifferent, for when thy cloak of being shall be rent, twill not matter how e'er thy life was spent. Yes, friend, since joy and youth my life adorn, this purple wine I drink from night till morn. Ah, do not curse this pain annulling juice, you know tis all that cheers our life. Forlorn. Beneath the skies each mortal undergoes a thousand griefs, a thousand heartfelt woes, but still love reigns between the cup and flask, and lip to lip pure blood between them flows. Since Venus and the moon have cheered the sky, nought have men seen with purple wine to vie. What half as precious as this sparkling juice can these same thoughtless vintners for it buy? 
Yes, Saki, time will soon us both o'erthrow. From this world's fragile tent we then must go. But when a cup of wine is in my hand, I bid farewell to all my heartfelt woe. Why should thy heart with fears of God be fraught? When he designed this world, to thee no thought he gave, thy hopes of heaven are not worth a moment's happiness at random court. In praise of wine and cup my moments glide. Ah, faithful devotee, you boast with pride that wisdom is your only master here. But know you that myself was wisdom's guide. Come, fill the morning cup, the sun is high. Come, tune thy harp, asleep thou shouldst not lie. The swift and sure return of tear and die has crushed a thousand kings like Jam and Kai. Yes, within the ground my dust is laid, and name and memory to a story fade. Ah, brother mine, I humbly beg of thee that drinking vessels from my clay be made. Away with all that grieves the soul, for soon we leave this world where wine the richest boon of mortals is. A single draught outvies whatever lies betwixt the fish and moon. Yes, drink. How many lives their way will wind. The soul will vainly try its clay to find when judgment calls. For this same skull, the seat of joy and pain, the potter's heel will grind. While on this little earth you humbly crawl, drink wine, the past you never can recall. Since ruin soon will overspread its face, in wine be you too ruined once for all. Whene'er a cup of crimson wine I hold, my soul seems chained within a cup of gold, and for a time from earthly shackles freed, all nature's secrets to my mind unfold. End of section 6「Section 7 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. All ephemeral, dead long ago, some have not been remembered even for a short time, and others have become the heroes of fables, and others again have disappeared even from fables. M. Antoninus a bird upon the crumbling walls of Tus addressed the grinning skull of Kai Caius. The rumbling of thy drums affright no ears, thy trumpets now are tarnished from disuse. This world is nothing but an inn decayed, a transient resting place of light and shade, a banquet which a thousand jumsheds left, a tomb wherein a thousand Bahram Gurs are laid. I chanced a potter at his work to meet, while heads and handles for his vessels neat, upon his swiftly turning wheel he shaped, from mouldering pates of kings and beggars' feet. The potter heeds no silent tongue's appeal, his hands no tender mercy ever feel, though tis Feridun's heart, Kaikostru's head, that whirls in anguish on his rapid wheel. A sighing bit of breathing clay, this vase, once humbly bowed before a woman's face, this earthen handle fixed about its neck, did oft in love a cypress form embrace. My manuscript of youth has dusty grown, the roses of my spring will soon be blown, the joyful bird of youth that hovered near, I know not whence it came, nor whither flown. The potter deftly shapes his turning clay, and knead and mould it with what skill he may, he little thinks it once of human kind, the earth he mangles in his humour gay. Ah, mignon, mignon, fill the crystal glass, though who is fair in heaven cannot surpass thy loveliness, but one short day or two, and thou wilt be no more than dust, fair lass. I saw a potter at his work to-day, with rudest hand he shaped his yielding clay. O oh, gently, brother, do not treat me thus, I too was once a man, I heard it say. End of section 7 
Section 8 of The Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. The Letter of James, Chapter 1, Verse 6 Within the labyrinth of human creeds, of truth and wisdom, I have sought the seeds, by fairest flowers lured to venture on, I ne'er have gathered aught but worthless weeds. The ways of God are veiled from human ken. Yes, night and day, tis three score years and ten that I have pondered over them. But in vain, my thoughts have ne'er been cleared by tongue or pen. The mosque, the Kaaba, tis a prison cell, a chain, the chimes from the steeple swell, the rosary, the mehrab, and the church, are like the cross, all signs of slavery fell. O oh, thou hast made us slaves to passion's sway, Although our master we must ne'er obey. But tell me this, how can we tip the jar, And still not let its contents run away? When lost in darkness, stars and skies shall be, My soul, released, will wing its flight to thee, And it will ask, O oh God of righteousness, why takest thou the life thou gavest me? For threescore years within the school of life I heard the wrangling and the endless strife About this world and that to come, And learned that all their schemes with errors base were rife. Ah, brother, but a little while, And thou shalt find thy lasting home the secret veil behind. Rejoice thy heart and banish grief, for know thy source Thy goal has never been defined. What man believes that he who made the vase Will sometimes shatter it in anger base? The maker of these weak, misguided men Will surely not in wrath his works efface. O Kaja, grant a single wish, I pray, Point out the road that leads to God. But nay, my steps have found the narrow path aright, And thou it is who wandereth from the way. From faith to disbelief is but a breath, From doubt to faith but one the dervish saith, Come gaily let us pass our fleeting days, A little while then cometh the angel death. This azure vaulted heaven a despot saw, Of all the problems that we ponder o'er, Not one has solved, Whene'er it finds a heart in grief, Tis sure to add one sorrow more. This universe is but a mantle worn, the Jehun from our flooding tears is born, And hell a fire ignited by our griefs, And heaven a respite from our life forlorn. End of section 8。section 9 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Le déiste contemple un peu je ne sais quoi, lointain par qui le monde en s'ordonnant commence, et le savant qui rit de la sainte démence, nomme son dieu nature et n'en fait qu'une loi. Ainsi roulons toujours du néant aux idoles, du blasphème au credo, les multitudes folles. Dieu n'est pas rien, mais Dieu n'est personne. Il est tout, Sully Prudhomme. This spirit which the universe contains Shines in the rose, then in the lion reigns. Although the outward forms may pass away, The spirit still remains, yes, still remains. At times thou art concealed, And then anon thy subtle essence Casteth thou upon all things existent Twixt the earth and moon. Thou art the player and the looker-on. What may this moving panorama be? Ah, would that I could tell it all to thee. Tis something tossed up by the boundless vast That will return to that same unknown sea. A turning magic lantern shone this world Around the sun as candle swiftly whirled, While mortals are but phantom figures Traced upon the shade, forever onward hurled. 
a would there were a place unknown to care, and that our weary road might take us there, so after many years we might burst forth again, as bud in spring the roses fair. This universe is but a body old, which doth the right as deathless spirit hold, while elements and skies and men are parts of one whose laws the whole enfold. End of section 9《Section 10 of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam, translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The soul's dark cottage, battered and decayed, lets in new light through chinks that time has made. Edmund Waller In vainly seeking thee, no rest we find, but in and out the labyrinth we wind, though every tree and rock proclaimeth thy name and work, our ears are deaf, our eyes are blind. O Allah, grant my captive heart thy rest, be merciful unto my grief-torn breast, forgive these feet which lead me to the inn, forgive this hand which takes the vine's bequest. Unlock the door, O Allah, thine is the key, thy hand reach forth and deign to succour me, to human aid I will not trust myself, for all will perish, saving only thee. I am, just as thy hand my nature cast, mid countless benefits my life has passed, and now I fain would know if sins of mine can overthrow thy mercy at the last. The two and seventy wrangling sects contend, and ever strive their crumbling creeds to mend, but I have cast them, one and all, away, and thou, O Allah, art my only end. Allah no profit from my homage hath, and though I oft have strayed from virtue's path, twill matter not, he will forgive, I know, for he is quick to pardon, slow to wrath. Till when these thoughts of what is thine or mine, shall I my life to joy or grief resign? Twill not be known until my spirit flies, whether the life I live is mine or thine. Lives there a man who breaketh no decree? And if I err, tis writ thou chasteneth me. What if I sin and in return thou strikest? What is the difference between me and thee? At times to some frail earthen vase we turn, again we seize the book some truth to learn. Our lives are neither wholly good nor bad. O oh, thinkest thou that we for air shall burn? Adina is reserved for fast. But stay, why shouldst thou put the cup and flask away? I know the grape is then forbidden, but worship omnipotence and not the day. O oh, do not think the skies our souls enthrall, the griefs, the joys that to us mortals fall. Come not from thence, nor are they known to fate, Heaven is far more helpless than us all. O thou who pratest of hell's eternal fire, And threatens the man who sins with anger dire, How canst thou pardon Omar's faults, To God's prerogative how darest thou aspire? End of section 10。section 11 of the strophes of Omar Khayyam Translated by John Leslie Garner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Ven muerte, tan escondida, que no te sienta venir, porque el placer del morir no me vuelva a dar la vida. Escriba. Come, death, but gently come and still, all sound of thine approach restrain lest joy of thee my heart should fill, and turn it back to life again. Within the maze of human faith and doubt, I erstwhile loved to wander round about, but no one have I met the way to clear, and through the entrance door I passed without. Forget the day old time has ta'en from thee, from thoughts of the morrow thou e'er shouldst flee, build not on that to come, on that long past, Lose not thy life, though bright it may not be. 
How long will reason's chains oppress my soul? What boots it whether one day or hundreds roll above my head? Come, fill the cup, my clay the potter soon will shape into a bowl. Last night into a potter's shop I strayed, Where jars and pots a many were displayed, And all cried out, Where is the potter now, And those who bought and sold, where are they laid? I dreamed a sage exclaimed to me, O son in sleep, the rose of fortune blooms for none, Why sleep, when sleep is but a twin to death? Ah, thou shalt sleep enough when life is done. O oh, grind my dust when dead with might and main, And thus my loss will be my fellow's gain. Then take my dust and knead with wine a jar That sometimes shall that selfsame wine contain. What profit from our coming and our going, And from the seed of hope that we are sowing? Ah, where are those who lived and passed away? Their whereabouts transcends all human knowing. Kayam, your body is a tent, your soul a sultan, destined to an unknown goal. The dread farash of doom destroys the tent, the moment when the sultan summons toll. Kayam, who stitched the tents of wisdom's law, is fallen in the pit and covered o'er. Death's shears have cut the tent ropes of his life. The world has cast him out as worthless store. End of section 11 End of the Strophes of Omar Khayyam Translated by John Leslie Garner Recording by Algie Pug